Hey, <laughs> so you want a strong dog fence and uh, I just got mine finished so I thought I'd share it with you so you could see what it looks like and how I made the decision so that if you want to get a fence you can do the same thing. I'm Dr. Carolyn Lincoln with play to behave and you can find out more about me at playtobehave.com. So I'm filming this, I can't see what I look like because I've got the back of the phone to me. Um, so I'm gonna turn it around so I can show you the fence. Um, but just know that I have had an invisible fence in the past and that was a problem because other animals come in. Um, you can't control that. Children, um, people who might check your meter or whatever can come into your yard and that can be a problem if they surprise your dog or if your dog isn't completely friendly and you wanna have protection. Um, or for a variety of reasons. So it's nice to have a fence that's good and strong, um, but that also is attractive. And that was really important to us. So I'll turn this around so I can show you what we got. This is um, a split rail fence. So you see this has three rails. You can get it with just two. Ours is about four feet high. You can get it three feet high. Um, I don't want my dogs to jump over it. And we have medium sized dogs. Well, I only have one right now, but we usually have two or three. And um, then there is welded wire on that. Can you see the wire? I'm going to show you up close. Um, and that's really strong. Now, our other fence that we had before this one also went under the ground so that the dog couldn't dig out and animals couldn't dig in. This one goes right flush to the ground. It doesn't go underneath. They, this particular company doesn't trench. So I wasn't too happy about that because I really did want those six inches under the ground, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna walk you around and show you the gates because the gates don't have to be the exact same. Hi, Gay, how are you? Thank you. <laughs> um, I didn't wanna have the gates the same as the wood because wood uh, you know, shrinks and expands, especially here in the Northeast where we have um, snow. You know, it gets really cold. So these are iron fences. Ugh, this isn't the best lighting, is it? There we go. So um, this is a man gate, they call it. So it's a smaller gate and that lets you into the um, walkway. And I probably didn't need both, but um, I did get also, it just looked better because there's a walkway there. Um, I got this double gate and that allows landscaping equipment to come in. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you, when you get a gate that you have a way to get in appliances and pianos and <laughs> um, landscaping equipment and that kind of thing. And then the latches make a huge difference. So this is the kind of latch we have here. So you pull down on this and that way this will open. Now there's also these stakes in the ground that keep this gate closed. So it's really safe for the dog. Now if I go over to this man gate, they call it, I'm sorry if I'm making you guys dizzy. Um, this one is, is similar, like you push up. It's the same thing, I think, yeah. You push up and then this comes out. And so if the dog were to like jump up and bang on it, they couldn't open it. And even if they did somehow knock it up to get it open, they, they're gonna try to push the gate out, not in. So that was a good choice. You have to think about which way you want your gate doors to go. Now from the other side, you'll see Whoa, sorry about the noise there. Okay, you'll see that this, to open this, you push down and then you can just push it open with your foot or with your hand. So I like that a lot. And then you, there's also a spot there on the other side. I don't know if you can see the little hole there um, that you could actually put a lock in or a carabiner or something else to keep it closed. Um, so which way you want the gate to open and how secure you want the lock is important. Um, and then, we had vinyl put in from there. Now they put a really funky lock on here and I don't know that we're gonna keep this latch because to open it, I have to push these two pieces together. See, and then I have to pull this open and I really need two hands. Now I was able to do that with one hand, but usually it's, it's kind of hard to do to get this piece to come out. So that's weird, like it doesn't have a handle. So I'm, we're gonna talk to them about that. But on the other side, on this side, um, you push these together and then you can push the gate open. I did that with my foot. Um, so that's okay. It, it has a lock. Ugh. Unless it's lined up, it won't open or close. So of course I can't do it there. So this, if you push this to the side, you can't 
open it. So it could lock it so the dog couldn't accidentally open it. It would be a little hard for the dog to open it because if they push down on this, it's not going to open. It has to be completely lined up. I suppose there's a potential they could get it open. And you could also put a, a different lock in this hole if you really wanted. Um, so it's okay. I just don't like... I mean, it's supposed to be really secure, but I just don't like how I can't open it with one hand. Um, so I don't know if we're going to keep that or not. My husband's not super happy with it. Um, and what else did I want to tell you? Um, so this, this wood over here, another thing I like about it is I don't have to do anything to maintain it. It's going to change color over time. So, um, the reason we got these heavier iron gates is because, um, like I said, they won't swell and shrink with the weather. But the other reason is that, um, we're here on the lake and so the lake has really strong winds and the fence company told me that it was a better idea i'm sorry really really loud um the fence uh, company told me that it's a much better idea because of the winds you know to have a stronger gate because the gates can be damaged i don't know if that's true or not i mean i'm sure that they they had our best interests at heart and so that's why he told me that, um, and I just thought, yeah, I don't want to take a chance with having a problem. So I really like the way that they look. Um, it blends in, I think, nicely with the natural landscape, and it gives it a little bit more definition. So I think it's pretty myself. You don't really see that wire unless you get up close, which is good. It doesn't block your view. It's strong, and like I said, if you have it go underground, then you're going to keep animals from burrowing under and not all animals of course but a lot of them and keep your dog from burrowing out and then this wire goes all the way up to the top here so it's unlikely that you know my dog's going to be jumping that high to get out so that's my fence story i hope you guys like that um i feel much safer i there are some lose my network here um there are some networks i mean networks there are some uh, rescue organizations that won't even allow you to uh, adopt a dog if you don't have a fence. So, you know, it's a big consideration. And whether or not they accept you having an invisible fence, I don't know. A lot of dogs can get out of those. The battery can die. The landscapers can cut the cord by mistake. Um, the shock can make a dog nervous. So there's um, a lot more negatives. I think the only real negative to there's two negatives to having a physical fence like that. And one is like this one is cost and it may cost more than, um, but there are options that are cheaper, obviously, um, than an invisible fence, but invisible fence can be expensive too. And then the other, um, negative about it is just, you know, the look because you know, the aesthetics of it, because you may not want a fence, um, in your view. But as I said, this is a pretty good uh, compromise in my opinion. So I hope you enjoy seeing it and that you guys have a great day. This is Dr. Carolyn Lincoln with Play to Behave and thanks for listening. Nice that you can, you could, oh, Vicki, hello. Nice that you could come on and Gay, nice to see you. All right, take care all.